We're going to talk tight ends for week one. These salaries, okay, guys, a lot of talent, as we know. Travis Kelsey, far and away the highest on the board. He comes in at 8,300, 2K more in the next price guy. That is George Kittle. So as things stand right now, Reed, can you justify paying up for Kelsey? I can, uh, especially if you want to stack him with a guy like Patrick Mahomes. I think not a lot of people are going to do that. It's 32% of your salary cap cough. And I think that gives you leverage off the field of what they're going to do. Of course you can pay down, but it's a Ricky Bobby approach. You either go at the top or you're going very, very down low cheap. So I don't mind it. I like Kelsey. Moose, what do you say? Of course you can pay up for Travis Kelsey or Darren Waller's not on the slate. He had 148 targets last year. <laughs> George Kittle, you know, there's, there's too many targets in San Francisco. Kelsey, if, if you're not paying up for Kelsey, you're paying down super cheap on this slate. So, yeah, Kelsey's definitely in play week one. Juicy against the Browns here. Would you like to be a contrarian? Uh, not really. I mean, I think that the guys mentioned it. This guy was competing for the for the leading receiver in the league last year all season long. He's been the be- one of the best fantasy players. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the other guys up here, I, I don't love any of them. So uh, I'm either paying for Travis Kelsey or I'm paying way down at tight end. Um, I, I do love Reed's call of sort of a contrarian, really expensive stack because it's week one. We got a lot of great value plays. We got a lot of guys that are yet to emerge as legitimate fantasy options. So I like it. Okay, guys, after Kittle at 6,300 bucks, so like I said, considerably cheaper than Kelsey, you could pay down ever so slightly, not pay way down, but you can look at the likes of TJ Hawkinson, Dallas Goddard. You have Hunter Henry, Logan Thomas. These guys are all 4,600 and above. So if there's one guy there, Kenny, we'll go right back to you who stands out. Who is it? Well, it's got to be Logan Thomas. Just the fact that he has the best matchup. You know, look at TJ Hawkinson going against San Francisco. Uh, I want no part of that. Dallas Goddard, uh, not, not sure what's going to happen with him and Zach Ertz. You have Hunter Henry going against New England. That's never fun. Um, th- this whole range is sort of kind of weird. So I like Logan Thomas. He's got the matchup against the Chargers. The Chargers, of course, memorably last year and one of the, the worst defenses in the league, blew so many leads for Justin Herbert. And, and what did Los Angeles go out and do this offseason? They went and added to the offensive line. That is all they did. Uh, they added a few pieces on defense. They they drafted a great corner at Asante Samuel Jr., but I don't think that's going to stop them or, or stop Logan Thomas, rather. I think he's going to have a great game. He, he was an integral part of this Washington offense last year. It pains me to have any sort of faith in Ryan Fitzpatrick, but you know what? He can complete three passes to the other team, and he can complete about six to Logan Thomas, and I can be happy both ways. So I, I like playing him. Moose, how about a guy from that group who stands out to you as the best week one option? Uh, for week one, it's Logan Thomas for me as well. I prefer Hawkinson over Thomas for in season long uh, slightly, but I mean, again, Kenny alluded to it. The 49ers allowed the fewest uh, receptions to the tight end position last season. It's got to be Thomas. Curtis Samuel already banged up, may not even play week one. Who knows? I would love Goddard in that matchup if Zach Ertz wasn't there. Unfortunately, Zach Ertz is still in Philly. So it, it, it's Thomas for me from that group. Reed, do you have another option? Yeah, I'll give a case for TJ Hawkinson. I know the defense is really strong, San Francisco. They had a lot of they're getting a lot of guys back from injury, but who's the number one there? There is no true number one. And his game does fit what Jared Goff likes to do, which is check down. Look, they might be out of this. The Detroit's defense is is terrible. So you might see TJ Hawkinson get like eight catches, especially like in the fourth quarter when it's garbage time. So I, I definitely like the Logan Thomas call. I like Terry McLaurin in that spot a little bit more, Kenny, but at the same time, TJ Hawkinson is the clear cut number one target in Detroit, and there's really no one else. Reed, selfishly, I'm I'm most interested in what all of you have to say to this <laughs> next one because we have Kyle Pitts here, who of course comes in. He was the highest drafted tight end in the draft. He was regarded as the best pass catcher in the draft. He's really in, in many ways more of a receiver than a tight end. He's going up in week one for Atlanta against just a team that was miserable last year defensively, especially against that position in Philadelphia. So what do you think as far as right out of the gate rostering pits, or is it more of a wait and see with the rookie? I think you can. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what the roster percentage, what the sediment is going to be on pits. And I think it's going to be high cough. I mean, his price tag really, you, you kind of feel like it should have been in the 5k range, but now you see it at four, four and he's right above guys like your boy, Jonu Smith and some other guys that you don't really necessarily think, you know, should warrant a Kyle Pitts. And I get it. He's a rookie. It's a wait and see. We don't have seen anything yet, but I don't think Russell Gage is going to be the number two guy here. I think it's going to be Kyle Pitts. I think the target share, if you can get him at a, you know, 18% target share outside of Calvin Ridley, I think that's screaming value at $4,400. I like to, I, I play him in cash and GPPs. I don't mind it at all. Kenny, is Pitts too cheap to ignore? 
Um, I'm ignoring him. Look, here's the thing. You have to be really, really special to stand out, especially week one as a rookie receiver, rookie running back. We've seen this so many times. So many people getting excited about CD lamb, Jerry Judy last year, Christian McCaffrey, when he was a rookie, Josh Jacobs, when he was a rookie, you know, it, it, it sometimes takes a year to settle into the NFL. I'm fading Kyle Pitts high price in season long leagues, drafting him very high. And I, I don't, I, I don't really think that I can pay this much money when there's plenty of guys around this price that are great, as we'll talk about, um, you know, that you don't need to spend $4,400 on a tight end. If you're not going to draft, if you're not going to take Travis Kelsey, you'd go all the way down to like in the $2,000 range. I like some options. Um, Kyle Pitts has Russell Gage to compete with. He's got Calvin Ridley to compete with. It's the opposite of what, what uh, Reed was talking about with TJ Hawkinson. There's plenty of co- competition for targets and we're, we're just not sure what Kyle Pitts's role in this offense is going to be yet. Uh, he could be a Hall of Famer one day, but I, that doesn't mean that he's going to have like the best rookie season ever. So, Jeff, Kenny isn't rostering Pitts until 2022. How do you feel about him <laughs> in week one? How much more special do you want Kyle Pitts to be? <laughs> exactly. Top four or five. He was fourth no. overall. Like the he hasn't highest played a snap in the NFL. We want this TJ Hawkins. Like TJ Hawkins since overall. went over a hundred yards in his rookie two. game. Like what is yeah. he do, Kenny, to get on the Kenny list here? He's 4,400. <laughs> There's 150 targets with no Julio Jones up for grabs. This guy is pretty much a lock to see, like, over six targets, which, again, I mean, when you add in the talent there, I mean, he might he might be uh, on pace for a bigger target share than some of these guys over him. I think at 4,400, he's too cheap. And then when you add in the matchup, even with the rookie thing, and, and yeah, is he going to factor in right away? When you add in the matchup, I think he's way too cheap to ignore. Look, for tournaments, is he going to be too popular? Do you mean my to fade him from an ownership perspective? Absolutely. That's where I can get on Kenny's perspective. But from a talent perspective and a matchup, he's too cheap. You're going to Hayden Hurst. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He's not, he's no Chris Herndon. We forget about that. Right. Kyle? Uh, I forgot I, about Chris I, Herndon all the time. Look, I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm swimming in tight ends over in new England guys. So I, I, I just can't even relate <sighs> to this whole thing. All right, Kenny, let's just go right back to you here and get a take on a value tight end. Who do you like? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I'm, I mentioned earlier that I like looking really far down. There's, there's some names that Dan Arnold in the $2,600 price tag. I can't ignore him. You know, he, he signed with Carolina to try to get into a bigger target share. I think that they're going to get him involved But look, I mean, there's a very clear best play here, at least from a value perspective. Um, I, I also like Noah Fant, but it's Eric Ebron. Uh, Eric Ebron at $3,900 is kind of criminal. When you look at Buffalo, I mentioned I criticized the Chargers for not really doing anything on defense. What did the Bills do? I think they they drafted like three defensive linemen. They signed two more. They're just going crazy on the defensive line with the pass rush. But they're not going to be covering the tight end position. And when you talk about Eric Ebron, this is a guy that had a fantastic season with Ben Roethlisberger. He's going up against a terrible defense in Buffalo. And this, this is a chemistry that has been rapidly building in Pittsburgh. This is going to be a big game for them. They need to make a statement here. You, just, you look at a guy that's got seven-plus targets in a lot of games. I think that Eric Ebron has a ton of targets. And so for that reason, there's no reason to pay up over $4,000. You got Eric Ebron right there at 3900 Jeff, what do you think? <laughs> Eric Ebron, the fourth target on, on Pittsburgh? <laughs> yes. Just to save $500 off Kyle Pitts. Okay, sure. I mean, uh, we'll get some heads up going week one, Kenny. 3200 Anthony Ferkser, the Tennessee Titans Ooh. targeted – the tight end position, 30% of the time last year was the fourth highest percentage. Ferks are walking into the tight end one role. It's only 3,200. That's real value right there. I like that matchup week one. Should be a good fantasy one too. Reed, value tight end. I think Kenny and I are matching in sharp, but not in sentiment and uh, and things that we like at the tight end position. I mean, your argument for Kyle Pitts was target share with Russell Gage. And now you have Deontay Johnson. And you talk about the entire Pittsburgh offense. I'm I sorry, get the touchdown upside of, is there. Are any of those receivers new? Eric Ebron had a great season last year with the same guy. Yeah, but look, the touchdowns have to come down. They have to regress, Kenny. I, I get it. Look, I, I get what you're saying, and especially in that offense. You know, I understand where the where the logic is, but we're talking about value. That's not value to me. Eric Ebron at four hundred dollars less than someone that I we can theoretically say that could get 20%. I just don't see that from tight end. That's what you need. You need the volume. If it's not that, and we're going bargain barrel, if we're going bargain shopping, I don't think it's that guy. I think it's someone like Tyler Conklin. Like they, they've they said he is the quote unquote number two, but he's supposed to take over that Kyle Rudolph role. Irv Smith is talented. We know he's extremely athletic, but I like going after these type of games too, where you have a lot of talent on both sides of the ball in Minnesota and Cincinnati 
The over under is about 48 and a half. It's probably going to get up to 49. Attack those tight ends that aren't getting a lot of love in these high scoring games because in GPPs, right? I'm not playing Conklin in cash at all. But at his price tag, I think he's someone to, you know, to get you like four or five targets if you want to go that route. But at the same time, I, like I said, I think Kyle Pitts is someone that I do like. But if you want to go bargain shopping, I think Conklin is someone that you could uh, get better. I, I actually liked Kenny's Dan Arnold call. So I just wanted to end on a positive note there. Oh. I, I think I think 2600 is a good call, Kenny. Well, you're only thank ending you, that you. question. We're not ending the segment. Not just yet. This is where we get <laughs> fancy. We show the graphics that we have available. We're going to put them right on the screen. And each of you get to name your guy for week one. Your slate approved pick. Moose, let's go right back to you. No, I'll, I'll stick with Anthony Ferks, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll die on that hill. He's 3,200. I, I think this guy's very underrated uh, just uh, in terms of uh, the offense he's in as well. Kenny? Uh, I'm going to go with Logan Thomas. You know, this is a guy that averaged uh, double-digit targets over the last four games of the season last year when you talk about the matchup with, again, a very soft linebacking core, a soft secondary. Logan Thomas should be the number one option, uh, maybe the number two option, if you like, for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Should be a big game for Washington, big statement win week one, and they're going to have another great season. Reed, who's the must-play? Who's the slate-approved pick for week one at tight end? I was going to go easy cough and go with Kelsey, but I have to go on the cop. I have to go with Pitts, right? Like I got to die on that hill as well, especially if we're arguing with Kenny. It's we're getting close to week one. So I got to go Kyle Pitts. Why not?